Bulle, everyone. It's uh, been a totally interesting experience getting roped into the Genda project over the last uh, few weeks. And it's a real joy, I must say, to be able to have this opportunity to step forward and in that uh, big Genda mixing pot full of all these amazing and sometimes quite unexpected colors um, poured out of all the different life stories that are coming to the fore in uh, this unique platform uh, to be able to add my colors as well. Um, I am honored to be able to do that. And I hope that this will, what I have to say this afternoon, the story that I'm hoping to share with all of you will in some way inspire somebody somewhere to pick up a paintbrush and to start getting creative to rediscover a dream that they've tucked away as something impossible and to, to look at it and make it happen again. And if that happens with even just one person, then I guess all the, uh, the pre-performance stage fright that uh, I think every speaker has gone through this afternoon will have been worthwhile for me. I chose this photo when Sharon asked me for a profile picture, um, as windswept and messy as it is, because it is taken down at Wailolo Beach during a, a storm or just, just after one of the cyclones recently. And this is my happy place. This is the place that has kept me sane all through the last few years of uh, raising a family, being a working mum, and uh, building up the very small business that has become Singapore Studios. Uh, this place out there in the middle of nature is where I go to, to think, to, to sort out my emotions, to pray. And it is also the place where most of the really good pieces of art that I've ever made have been born in my imagination. Uh, going back a ways, to a small rural school in the middle of England where I spent my high school years. Um, our English teacher, who was called Mr. Jones, uh, stood up one day from his desk and across the empty blackboard, he took a piece of chalk and drew a great big line like the one you see at the top. And he said something to us that has stuck in my mind all these many years later um, much more so than any of the lofty Shakespeare quotes or the grammar rules that he tried to drum into our 16-year-old brains. Um, and he said to us, we the children of, of railway workers, of, of sheep farmers, of factory laborers, of pub owners, he said to us, you know what, you guys all have two choices in life, really. Um, you can live your life like that top line up there. You can live it in a safe and predictable way, doing what is the norm, what everyone around you expects you to do. You might have a little, a little bump for Christmas, another little dip in the line if you break your leg, perhaps somewhere there'll be a bump for when you get married or buy your first house, and, and then later on, another one when the grandchildren come, and everything carries on in a, a fairly smooth and, and safe, predictable way. Or, said Mr. Jones, you could have, and then he took his chalk and he drew another huge, big sweeping line with all those uh, highs and lows going across, and he said, your life could also be like this. Uh, if you take risks, if you step outside of your comfort zone and try new things, um, you will end up having an, an interesting and, and purposeful life. Um, it may mean that you make mistakes, that you fall flat on your face here and there. Those dark lows will only accentuate the mountaintops when you reach them. You get to choose. So that is a message that has uh, been in the back of my mind through all the storms in recent years especially and has reminded me, yep, that's what I chose. I chose a fulfilling and purposeful life, and I'm so thankful that uh, the many people along the way that have, uh, have helped me to, to carry forward on this journey. As Nelson Mandela reminds me on a screensaver that I have on my computer, there's no virtue in living small. 
So how on earth did I end up doing this and living there? As a teenager, uh, being raised with my three siblings by a single mother and moving house and schools over and over again, life was definitely not average and easy. And if you had told me at that point that this was going to happen to me, I would have laughed. I would have said, no way. Um, but as so often in life, obstacles can turn into blessings. Many people ask me, uh, how did I become an artist? And uh, for me, this journey started off very early in the fields and the woods around our home. Uh, we had no television, no screen time, um, but we had an amazing childhood uh, playing outdoors, imagining all kinds of interesting role plays and games, uh, collecting orphaned animals. We had ducklings swimming in our bathtub at home, possums, a baby owl one summer. One spring I had a small orphan goat that uh, I raised that would follow me around everywhere I went. Um, because we didn't have a lot of uh, material goods, no pocket money, um, when it came to birthdays and family occasions, um, I would make the gifts I wanted to give. So I would uh, go out there and, and pick huge bouquets of wildflowers and arrange them and, and make someone happy with that, or, or knit a scarf for one of my siblings at Christmas time, um, make my own, gre own greeting cards. Um, so very early in life that, that uh, need to be creative, um, almost a survival skill was there. And uh, yeah, just not having all the prepackaged entertainment, all the screen time, um, we ended up using our imaginations and uh, think, be, being forced to think creatively, uh, the ability to improvise, to create something from nothing. If you think about it, those are the qualities that are central to being an artist. A scholarship eventually brought me to the biggest and ugliest city in England, Birmingham, the one there at the top. And this is where I trained to be a teacher. And this is also where I met my very first Fijian, the man who was later to become my husband. The decision to move from there to there a few years later was, at the time, a no-brainer. That was 26 years ago, almost to the day. We moved to Fiji with our young son and a time of falling in love with a new cult country and an ancient living culture so different than anything I'd ever known followed. I was so excited and I also absolutely loved raising my children in the family oriented Itoke society in the wider context of Fiji's multicultural society, I would not want to exchange that for anything. It's been amazing. But no, the picture postcard part, as we all know here sitting in this room, is only part of the reality of re if life in Fiji. Especially if you have married into extended Fijian family, you're holding down a teaching job, raising small children, trying to learn a language that has so many different confusing dialects, and you are constantly thrown into cross-cultural situations where you don't really quite understand what's going on. There's all these different layers of meaning, and you very often end up feeling quite out of your depth. There we are. There is the, the childhood that uh, yeah, my children growing up within Fijian culture. So that was where our artistic journey began. It was a time of crisis for our family. Um, I had given up my full-time teaching job for a year to take time out to be with my small children on a, as a full-time mom again. And during that time, um, the IT company that my husband was working for happened to go through a difficult patch and all of a sudden his Paychecks began to bounce. We had just bought our house. We had school fees to pay. We had various extended family members living with us that needed looking after. 
and uh, the bills started piling up. What do we do? Um, this is where I took out my paintbrushes, trying to think outside the box, and ended up painting onto a piece of white mussy that had been left over from um, a ceremony that uh, our family had been part of. Um, that was because I had been searching high and low through the different shops in Nandi and could not find any canvas at the time, um, couldn't find any decent paint brushes, and uh, so I wanted to try out being creative, but um, had to make use of the resources that were he available at the time. That adversity, that um, needing to improvise, ended up being uh, something that completely changed my life because the beautiful white mussy that you see here made by our relatives from my mother-in-law's side, um, who live on the island in a small seaside village in the island of Atulele, uh, that has become our art material of top choice at Singapore Studios. What started off as a kitchen table project gradually began to expand as we realized, wow, there is a market out there especially in Fiji's tourism industry, for uh, paintings and uh, for, for artwork that um, is traditional in the sense that it is made on local bark cloth and um, a lot of our themes are traditional themes about Fijian culture as well. Um, but it is also modern, contemporary, bright, fits in the home of anybody living in many of the um, big cities around the world. There was no business plans no funds to invest, few conventional art materials. My degree was in education, not in art. I knew nothing about branding or product development or spreadsheets or, or cash flow, but I loved being creative. And the inspiration was absolutely everywhere. All around me, the beauty was there, it was raw and new, and my artwork became a love song to Fiji. If you walk into our yard today, you'll find our studio. It's still located in our family home in Nandi, and I still enjoy the, the privilege of being having a job, career, and being a stay-at-home mum all in one go. There's just a quick peek inside our studio, all the creative messes behind those paintings. And if you stop in to say hello to us, you'll meet some of these creative people, the um, young people that are working with me at the moment. It's very much a spirit of collaboration at Singapore Studios, the, the Fijian concept of solo solivaki, uh, all of us working together to do and create something bigger than any one of us individuals could attain on our own. I think we all really love being able to do what we would do as a hobby anyway, but we are doing it in a way that helps us to pay the bills, and provides jobs. Uh, getting out in the community, as you can see there at the bottom, is, is one of the highlights when we do have time to, to go out and share our art and our love of being creative with young people around us. Um, just a few samples of the art that I create. Some of you may be familiar, some not. Um, this is the, the a painting that um, I basically has the theme of the grass is not always greener on the other side in response to meeting so many people that were desperate to migrate away from Fiji. And here's me coming into Fiji and, and loving being a citizen of this country and uh, wanting to express the, the, the many beautiful and powerful things that are part of life here that we perhaps need to take, uh, pay it more attention to. This next pa painting celebrates the many strong women that I've met along the way, have grown to love and respect survivors of domestic violence and emotional abuse, rising up with surreal strength time and time again. And then this one here, which is the, a painting about the choices we all have, to, uh, when, the way we treat our children, positively or negatively. In uh, 
wrapping up, I want to just relate a story to all of you. Um, yeah, this this was happened in a school near Dandy just a short while ago. I believe it's very hard to be creative when you don't believe in yourself, when your self-esteem has been pounded into dull conformity. In many classrooms around Fiji, children are being fed a steady diet of put-downs daily. The daughter of mine that you see in these photos, who's now a little bit bigger, uh, was sitting in a classroom. Just recently, the Ministry of Education had sent out a, another survey, and her teacher was dutifully filling it out. The ministry wanted to investigate the correlation between parental income and absenteeism. So the 40-odd teenagers in that classroom had been asked to state how much their parents earned. By raising their hands, as the teacher called out income brackets, in front of all their peers, in a classroom full of haves and have-nots. I kid you not. When my daughter related this humiliating experience to us later that evening, she was almost in tears. You see, she had not put up her hand. When the teacher asked her why, she had replied, Ma'am, my mum runs her own business. I don't really know how much she earns. The teacher wanted to know what I did. She's an artist, ma'am. Oh, I see. Well, we'll tick the lowest income box then, was the response. I tell you this story because I think it encapsulates the pervading attitude towards the arts that exist in the minds of parents and teachers and policymakers in this country, towards both our heritage arts and the contemporary arts. This kind of attitude that means artistically gifted young people can't get qualified in the areas they're good at or are passionate about, not to mention turning their creative talents into careers. There are many of them out there now, scrubbing toilets and hotels, packing boxes in supermarkets, filling out spreadsheets in offices, or roaming our streets. The creative industries has so much potential to for the, the tourist dollars to be trickling down and for the families of Fiji to be filling their baskets with those tourist dollars in a much more um, dynamic way. So many solutions that are out there. So this is my final question throwing out to all of you. The young people, the young warriors that you see on this photo, are going to want to ha get out there and have adventure later in life. What are we doing as, as educators, as parents, as, as citizens of Fiji to ensure that we open up opportunities for those adventures to be creative and constructive? And my final takeaway, if you want to be creative, just go for it. You shouldn't be waiting until you think you can do that masterpiece. The process of being creative actually makes you more and more creative. And keep that spirit alive, that spirit of curiosity. Uh, the quote there that I love a lot, once a year, travel somewhere where you've never been before. And that doesn't have to be an expensive trip overseas. It can be exploring the, the creek up the back of your neighborhood or, or going to have a cup of drowning molly in a the home in a village somewhere, in an informal settlement, uh, meeting people that you would not normally talk to, attending again the event. Um, that spirit, I think, is at very much at the, at the basis of who I am as an artist. So there you are, friends, a few pebbles from my creative journey. And I'm very grateful to everyone who helped me to, exp to discover them and who is helping me to carry them on my way. Binaka. Thank you. Thank you.